All right. All right, so uh, Mr. Ratliff has graciously come to join us today to talk, help us prep for our church visit assignment. Remember, you've got, let's see, let's find that where we want to be. We're going to do just a quick intro to remind ourselves. You've got two church visits that are uh, part of your uh, requirements for this semester. How about <laughs> part of what you're going to do to pass this class for this semester, all right? Um, and I'll, we spend a significant amount of, amount of time helping prep for those so that you can glean the most from them possible, okay? So I'm going to do a really quick intro because I want to give Mr. Ratliff as much time as he needs. And if we still have some time, I'll tell you a little bit more about the second church visit and some stuff like that. But just from a, a big picture process of why we're doing this, um, I firmly believe that there's great value in examining others' worship practices, especially if we've only grown up in one church, if we've grown up in like a similar environment uh, our whole lives. And so the, these assignments are, are designed to help give us a chance to just go swim in somebody else's water for a little bit, okay? Uh, help us understand the various streams of Christianity. And one of the biggest, most important things you can do with this project is to come into it with respect and with an open mind with a reminder that just because uh, somebody's worship might look different from yours, uh, that doesn't mean that you're not brothers and sisters still. Just because even some nuances of their theology might be different from yours, we can still be brothers and sisters. Of course, there's some hills we gotta decide where we're gonna die on, um, but hopefully uh, these won't be that. Also, I haven't, given, I, haven't, I haven't given up on you yet. I know you have. <laughs> I have a question. That's I an inside ask. joke. I have a question us. I want to ask you, but I know if I ask you, you'll be like, "Ooh, oh, oh. yeah." Ron's, Ron's trying to convert me. I'm trying to convert him back. You know, but we have we have some issues in theology that we don't see eye to eye on, but we still respect each other and we still sharpen each other. Uh, as iron sharpens iron, we still support each other as friends and as brother and sister in Christ. And I love the fact um, that y'all love him so much. How could you not love him? Harry Potter, all grown up, right? Okay. You, see, you see it, don't you? Um, and, and, and because I, you know, I've, I've been here for what? Well, we've been here for the same Is amount of time. Yeah, 13 and a half-ish years. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the attitudes that I see in the student body towards other denominations, and particularly towards Catholicism uh, specifically, have just been so much more generous, so much more gracious than they were when I first came here. And I think that Ron's presence here has a lot to do with that. Like, it's... it's it's one thing to say, oh, no, it's Catholics, blah, blah, blah. But then you're like, wait a second, this is my friend Ron. And we start realizing these are real people who really love Jesus. And so, um, so your first church visit needs to be to a Catholic church or an Episcopal church. You can pick either one. What we're looking for at this point is um, what we would call a liturgical church, something with a lot of formality, a lot of ups and downs and robes and maybe even incense and things like that, okay, uh, which will be very different from, from a lot of our backgrounds. And then the second visit, this is in the syllabus, you're going to choose either the Tazay service at First Congregational Church, which is on Thursday nights, or um, a more uh, charismatic, Pentecostal type. So we're kind of going from the range of formality to informality, from uh, reserved to expressive. Uh, so these are some of your choices for that second one. If there's something else, in fact, I think, yeah, I have that. Just run it by me if there's another place that you'd like to visit. Uh, let me let me know so that I can just make sure it fits the assignment objectives. Okay. Um, the purpose of this project is not to convert anybody to anything. Okay. Don't get me fired. I'm not trying to convert anybody to Catholicism or Pentecostalism or Charismaticism or to Zayism. Okay. Um, it's it's not to to try to convert anybody. It's not to uh, put you in a situation where you feel like, you, like you're violating your conscience. And I have had people who've had to do alternate assignments because they had such strong convictions. Um, really uh, across the board, I've had some people who just didn't feel like they could go to a Catholic church and they had to wrestle through that. And, and it, it, I would much rather help you find an alternative assignment than put you in a situation where you feel like this is just not right. I've had people on the, on the other end of the spectrum too, like I just, I, I have enough disagreement with what's happening at this, excuse me, particular charismatic church or whatever, that I just don't feel like I can go there. Okay, that's, that's fine, let's, let's change that up, okay? 
that make sense? You hear what I'm saying there? Okay. Um, we're not going to criticize individual worshipers, okay? Most likely you're not going to have a relationship with these people, so don't feel like you need to judge them. God can handle that, okay? Um, we're not there to criticize their practices. We're just there to observe and to learn from their practices. We're not there to debate nuances of theology, and there absolutely is a time and place for debating nuances of theology. That's not the purpose of what we're trying to do here, though, okay? We're just trying to observe. What? People really went there and tried that? Oh my gosh, your point. No, I, okay, so the uh, Agape Family Church, Mrs. Blakoski, who's our piano teacher here, has, has served there for decades or at least 14 years, I don't know. Um, and she has memories of back 14, 15 years ago, of students coming there and like writing furiously all, you know, because they, they went with this, I'm gonna attack and find everything that's wrong with this. And so, and I was dumb enough when I first came here not to, I, I sent everybody in cold. <laughs> and I, I learned it's better for us to talk about that and like lay it out and just say, yeah, you might have some differences, but you can still learn from them. Okay. I mean, and I, I, frankly, I think that's true in every arena of life. Um, there's some books I've read that, man, I don't like. I don't. I, I have a particular name in mind right now that I don't need to throw out there. Uh, but some of the stuff this guy that I'm thinking of has said lately just infuriates me. But I still learned some stuff. And so I think that's true in, in all areas of life. But that's our, our purpose isn't to debate that. It's not to condemn anybody. Like, oh, they're just going through the motions. Okay. Or they're just all being emotional. Okay, it's, it, That's not our job right now. Now, there is a place in Christianity for holding each other accountable, but that comes with relationship. All right. So this is more about observing. Uh, we're also not looking to be like, oh, well, I don't believe that's consistent with scripture, but it must be okay because we went to that church. No, there may be some things that you observe that are not okay, right? What we are trying to do is learn from the worship practices of our brothers and sisters from various streams of Christianity. So I can say, I really don't agree with this, but man, the passion that you bring to worship, I need to learn something from that, even though I don't agree with you on this topic or the reverence that you bring when you approach God. I need to learn from that, even though I don't agree with you about this issue. Does that make sense? All right, cool, you got that. This is a really good class. I know I told you that last semester, but this one, okay? Um, we don't, uh, we're gonna skip all this and turn it over to, to Mr. Ratliff. Um, so he's gonna walk you through what it's like to go to a Catholic Mass. Uh, let me tell you real quick, there is like a subversive objective to this, or not subversive, that's the wrong word, underlying objective to this assignment. So like our stated objective is that we would learn from other people's practices, but there's this underlying objective too. Uh, how many of you grew up going to church? Okay, okay. How old were you guys, just curious, when you started going to church? 17, 16. Okay, okay. All right, so you guys are probably not going to feel that you've probably experienced this underlying objective more than the rest of us have. For those of us who grew up going to church, it's really hard for us to understand how difficult it is to walk through the doors of a church for the first time. Um, because you remember all those unwritten rules we wrote up on the board and everybody knew them? When you go in for the first time, you don't know what they are, but you know there's something. And, and there's just this sense of, I stick out. Even though it's not true, we have to fight it. And so by going to these uh, different styles of churches, it's going to give those of us who grew up in the church a little taste of how, how difficult that is. And hopefully it will increase our sensitivity as we are hosts and hostesses in our own churches. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so part of me wants to just throw you into Catholic Mass completely cold so you can feel just how uncomfortable that can be. Um, but again, I've learned that it's, it's more productive for us if we have at least a little bit of an idea of what to expect. So Ron's going to give you a taste of that. He's not going to tell you everything, though. And then he'll come back later in the semester and help us unpack what we experienced, okay? So are you, my friend. Thank you. Have any of you ever been to a Catholic Mass before? Okay. Ah, ah. Uh, you know what you're doing there. 